Hey guys, we, JC and I just wanted to invite you to uh, our first ever collaboration live event that we're going to do next Monday. And uh, JC is magnificent, specializes in, and just absolutely crushes it with Airbnb arbitrage. So JC, tell us what we're going to talk about in our live event. Robbie, thank you so much for that intro. Man, if you ever have thought about getting into the Airbnb space, we are going to be talking about this one strategy, which is called Airbnb Rental Arbitrage, which is a fantastic opportunity, especially he heading into this recession where you can make lots of money. So if you like to make money and you want to learn some tricks, how to do it, tune in on Monday and you're going to love it. Awesome. Awesome. I'd like to talk about, so I, I took a lot of notes during your presentation, by the way. So I, I really stayed quiet while you were going because you were on such a roll. And uh, even when Adon was asking questions, I just wanted to see the interaction between you guys. And, and what I recognize about both of you guys is, is what you just kind of said. I think it's in your DNA, Adon's DNA, and I, I'll even add myself in there. This idea of bringing value to people that is so powerful, right? Like, so when you're, and, and we say on our channel all the time that we like to do deals with people, we like to invite partnerships and all of that. Um, when you're, when you're setting yourself up to invite partnerships and to do deals with people, when you're just naturally bringing value to everyone around you. And, and I've been working with Adon for a year. I know how tireless he works. And JC, I've, I've only met you recently, but I've, I've been to your house. I've seen you. When we, we did the breakfast club at your house. You're serving people water. I mean, you're, you're giving presentations. You're making sure everybody has an amazing time from, from the time they walk into the door till the time that you pat them on the back and send them on their way and, and everything in between so that when they leave there, they're like, wow, that guy was amazing. He, you know, he, he invited us into our house. And so I think that that's a powerful way to go through life. Um, and I could, could contrast it like this and say, sometimes people believe that they have to win on every issue and squeeze every drop out of everything. Nobody wants to do business with those people. People want to be in business like with people like you Juan Carlos or, or with Adon where you guys just bring massive value to whatever it is that you're doing. You work your ass off. You're tireless about it. I, I think that is the way to go. Um, and I think that's why you were able to get 14 people to give you $50,000 and trust. And you said, you know, sit back and, and drink the champagne because they know they've, they've interacted with you enough to say, yeah, if JC says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's, you know, yep. we, don't, we yep. don't have to worry about that. Let's, can you talk a little bit about this syndication and how, how that went about? And I know for you, you're, you're saying this is the first time you did like a, something $700,000 and put together 14 people. But um, talk about that process and, and who these people are that uh, kind of came alongside of you and are now your partners. Yeah, so I want to I wanna, I wanna share that. <clears throat> Doing the syndication is something that, so I joined a group of multifamily investors uh, it's called Legacy Family. Um, my my one of my mentors, the one that, that leads it, it's Tim Bratz, but a lot of my mentors are Fadi Bumitri, um, and just the entire group. But especially these guys are are doing exactly what I'm doing, which is the acquisition part, which is really what I'm, I'm most passionate. I mean, I'm very passionate about a lot of things, but uh, acquiring properties, I feel like it's it's I would say one of my superpowers, which is I got very uh, focus on on what I want. I think it's important when you're syndicating something, you have to be a freaking expert on that stuff, okay? Especially if you're the one that's going to be pitching the opportunity to investors. I've actually seen, I've been part, for me to get to this this level of, of or this not this level, but this point where I'm actually confident enough on getting on, basically I was getting on, two Zoom calls a day for like a week, right? And pitching and pitching and pitching this idea, right? Uh, and when I say pitching, that's not really even the right way to do it. It's more saying, hey, I, I would like just to get your opinion on this opportunity just to see what you think of it, right? And then it's another little tip, right? Like 
instead of pitching, you're just, hey, hey, there's an opportunity. I like your opinion on it. No, we, we like no. to say that we invite people. I, and, and I've told you, I've shared that with you. Invite. I, I will invite people to do things before the end of this, this presentation, right? But before you get off of this video, we're very likely to invite you to partner with us on something. And that that's a, maybe a softer way of doing it. But yes. uh, that way, the people that, that they come, they, they know that we're inviting them to be a part of something. And uh, so, yeah, like and subscribe to the channel, guys. We invite you to be part of this community even right now. So, so yeah, to, to answer your question about the syndication, I, uh, I joined the group. They started teaching me how to do it. I actually went to a couple of seminars. Then I also joined, uh, believe it or not, I invested in, in uh, Cardone Capital, $1,000, just so I could get in calls with one of the guys that's syndicating big millions of dollars into deals. So I, I invested so I could watch him, how he spoke, how he talked about things, how he talks to investors, how he talks about many things. And just basically trying to pick up what I can from like, you know, all this experience that I'm getting. And at some point, just kind of going for it, you know, like just kind of going for it. And because I think you can only learn so much by watching and studying. At some point, you got to go for it. And if you get punched in the face, then you just learn how to do it. Uh, my process was to learn basically the, the technical side of it, which is really important. But but the reality is there are experts out there uh, like like a SEC attorney. So instead of having a regular real estate attorney, you actually hire uh, an SEC, which is Securities and Exchange Commission attorney, which is a specialist that produces a syndication. So the syndication is just paperwork. It's just a legal paperwork that is pretty standard, which is actually pretty cool to understand. Uh, what I mean by standard is that it's about 60, 100 pages, whatever it is. And, and you just have to tweak like maybe like five to 10 things of it, right? How are you going to split the, the equity? How are you going to split the profits? How are you going to do this? And that there's like five or 10 things that you can kind of customize, but it's pretty much standard paperwork. And for people that are investing uh, for the first time, it's a lot to read. But if this is your 10th time that you're investing, you can kind of browse through certain things a lot quicker. So on the technical side, there's experts that actually you can hire. I paid my attorney $7,500 for the legal paperwork. Some people might find that really cheap. Some might find it really expensive. I, I'm already part of a group. So they told me that was a good deal. So I trusted in them. Uh, and essentially, uh, what, what was cool about having that is I didn't have to worry about, is this paperwork correct, right? Have they missed something? Have they left something in there? Like, what if an investor says, hey, Juan Carlos, what's going to happen if you die? Or what happens if you get divorced? Or what happens if I want to sell my shares? Or, you know, all these questions are like there because they've already built that paperwork. So on the technical side, you're leveraging that that work that has been done by an expert. So you don't have to be the expert. Two, if you're able to negotiate with that attorney so they can sit in on calls with you, with, with good investors, or not with big investors, I meant to say, uh, then that's even more value because if they have very technical legal questions and you can have your attorney answer it for them. Uh, and then on the on the, uh, I would say on the investment itself, again, you have to be an expert on it, right? I've seen people pitching multifamily deals. I've sat down and it's a painful experience to see somebody taking somebody else's presentation and trying to give the presentation. They don't even know how the numbers came into the paper and it's just bad. So I was very involved in the entire process. And, uh, and you know, if I had to do a syndication for, I don't know, some tech company or maybe even a multifamily deal. I, I, I just would not be able to speak at the same level as I can speak on uh, on what I feel like that I'm an expert in my own experience, which is the short-term rental. So yeah, syndication is, is cool because it unlocks other people's money and I'm not limited to my own money. That's really the takeaway. Like if you're doing the deal that's big enough, right, then, then you should definitely consider a syndication because you might already be syndicating 
but you're just not putting it on under the right legal paperwork structure, and you could be uh, you can you know could be liable for uh, for doing that. What do so. you what do you think the size of a project is where you would start using the syndication and and spending the money? And I and I would say I agree with you. I, I spent a lifetime of doing small deals where we partnered with people who had cash over the last ten or fifteen years. They clearly weren't syndications, but then as we started to get into this bigger stuff, we did it the same way you did. We've hired the best attorneys that the money can buy and the experts in the field just to keep everything right and to be safe about it and to make sure that we stay out of trouble. But what, what do you think the proper size is that you would start thinking about that? Uh, I think that if the, if the property has, I want to say more than like maybe two investors uh, and maybe over, I don't know, half a million dollars, something like that. Okay. So still a relatively small amount of money. You'd just yeah. go ahead. You'd just go ahead and spend. I mean, it's going to cost you seventy five hundred dollars probably if you're doing a half a million dollar deal, or if you're doing a fifteen million dollar deal. It may get more expensive if you're doing a fifty or sixty million dollar deal. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll find out together one day. We'll. we'll I know. We're going to we're going to continue to dream big and think big and do bigger and bigger stuff. Um, but yeah, so even even on a relatively small deal it's worth it to go ahead and spend the money and set it up right. Yeah. And I think if you can negotiate with your attorney, actually my, my attorney uh, on this deal was Nick Moore. And if you guys want information on him, I'm happy to share it, but he, um, he, he charges based on the size of the deal too. So he's not, it's not super crazy. It's not always going to be $7,000. It could be, it could be less, you know, at the okay. end of the day, it's just a matter of finding the right partner. So it's really important guys. When you're getting into any of these deals, you always have to paint the picture of partnership, which you do very well, and that you're in this business for the long run. Okay. So if you people don't want to do transactions, okay, they want to partner, they want to be invited to like the future, right? Like what could be like, and I and then if you happen to be a part of a group of other investors, you actually have to say that. Because people are listening, right? Like it's not the same as like you're just by yourself trying to buy real estate versus I'm actually part of a group of multifamily investors that own thousands of properties or doors in X, Y, and Z city. And we are, you know, I happen to be their boots on the ground. I'm, we're looking for investment opportunities and such and such. All of a sudden that sounds a lot better than if, hey, I'm just looking for an apartment for myself or a house for myself. It just doesn't sound very well. Yeah, that's right. Um, there was something else you said at the start of your presentation that sort of resonated with me because we we have a small fund. It's an opportunity zone fund called IPQOZB. Our, our sort of uh, idea of the properties that we're buying are are all hospitality, A-plus areas, which you can only do in Puerto Rico, by the way, buying these A-plus areas in, in paradise. We call it IPQOZB, Island Paradise uh, Opportunity Zone Fund. But we like oceanfront, just like you do, um, hospitality, A-plus areas. And that's what we've st stuck in our fund. You call them unicorns. I like that. I may steal that from you because Over. I believe we've got five unicorn properties as well. You do. And and this is a only in Puerto Rico type thing where, where you can, and, and we're doing full on hotel projects and things like that and combining them through act 60 and, and getting 40% tax credits. There's just a special place in time in history right now in Puerto Rico, where we can do this and take advantage of this. I don't think I'd invest in hotels or hospitalities anywhere other than Puerto Rico right now. Um, and, and you talked about buying the same kind of properties that we're doing. You're, you're, you're doing my house that I didn't see it. You're doing one-off condos and things like that. And, and these other beautiful, magnificent properties. It's, it's really a special time to be buying these kind of assets in Puerto Rico right now, knowing that the hospitality is going to grow from six and a half percent of the GDP to 15% of the GDP. And you can, you can sometimes buy them in opportunity zones and couple them with Act 60. Do you want to talk about just kind of your island and your experience with Puerto Rico and how 
it's sort of gone over the last, I'd call it five years, but probably since Maria, what have you seen happen on the island and how has it changed for the better or for the worse? Sure. So I actually think that's very clever that you guys are very crystal clear on taking advantage of this historical uh, time and tax incentives that exist in Puerto Rico. And you went even a step further, which was to understand how you could give value for yourself, but also for people that don't even live in Puerto Rico. And I think that's really where you guys just like, you know, it's just like another level of uh, differentiation from everybody else, which is you really understand how to just take advantage of something that was just ridiculously amazing and make it even some more amazing on top of that. Uh, so I, I think people need to need to understand that uh, and they need to connect with you guys for some more of that. But for, for me, I've always seen Puerto Rico as a place that were as a Puerto Rican, I've been fortunate to travel to South America, Europe, and other places and other all levels, right? From like very poor places to very uh, affluent places. And, and then I always reflect as a Puerto Rican. The first thing I think about is how am I so lucky that I can travel to all these places? My family is not rich. I just, I wasn't born into money. How am I so lucky? And I always come back to, well, it's because a um, couple of things, but one of them is my, where I was born, right? So the the concept of being like born on like a gold cradle, if that's the word, I actually feel like being born in Puerto Rico has been giving me a, an edge or an advantage over my neighbors, like Haiti, even Dominican Republic and some other islands. I'm always grateful. I'm like, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I was born in this island. Uh, I get to learn the language of English, which I think is basically the best currency that you can have. Uh, and, and, I, and, and it's just because we have a relationship with the most powerful country in the world. And I have seen what it looks like to be an independent country. I have seen what it looks like to not have access to the dollar. I have seen what it's what it looks like to not have a passport, right? Basically, if you're part of the U.S., even though a lot of countries want to shoot you down, right? On the other side, you have the dollar, you have the passport. We, uh, if, you know, bad things happen like hurricanes or earthquakes, we have a big, big brother that can like give us some money, you know? It's a big difference, man. It's a huge difference. And the thing is, I think that a lot of people that are in Puerto Rico, unfortunately, they have not seen that, right? They only know their experience from living in Puerto Rico. They haven't seen that. So to answer your question, it's important to understand where I'm coming from, right? Uh, which is grateful and also like experiencing what the other side looks like. And I, I now I see Puerto Rico as a place where um, Puerto Rico has a lot of beautiful uh, uh, real estate, right? It has just amazing real estate. I've known this for like forever. And I've always said, man, it only takes a few people to start talking about it and start putting their money where their mouth is and start buying some of these amazing assets, which I know they're good because it's just like, just common sense uh, until the thing turns around, right? So What's happened in Puerto Rico, what I've seen is that for the longest time, amazing properties have sit or have sat, just not, nobody's doing anything with them. And the reason is, again, because Puerto Ricans, uh, you know, we're not investors. We haven't been taught in school to be investors. We haven't uh, been taught how to be an entrepreneurs as well. Uh, so we have been taught how to be employees. And the reality is that in Puerto Rico, if, if, uh, if you don't happen to fall in entrepreneurship or in investment because you happen to be born with that or because you happen to be in proximity to somebody that is obsessed with that, then you, you miss out on being lucky enough to be in this island as an entrepreneur and as somebody that has all the, the setup in place to take advantage of this which is hiding in plain sight. But just because you don't happen to uh, put yourself in the right rooms, you don't see this opportunity. So the, the, uh, the way I see Puerto Rico is a place that happened to have all these things 
set up perfectly. And then at some point, the government decides to do a little bit more, which is create incentives for solving problems that are in some states in the United States, like New York and California, where people are paying over 50% tax. And Puerto Rico decides, let's just offer a crazy incentive for investing in Puerto Rico and hopefully turning around some of this real estate because the locals are not doing anything about it, or at least they're not doing enough to turn it around. And we've waited, you know, 50 or 100 years. Well, we got to do something. So let's offer some incentives. And then hopefully that will create some economic activity. And hopefully it will wake up to some people to say, hey, let's take advantage of these things. The news is, guys, I'm 100% Puerto Rican. And I'm going after all these incentives too. I'm actually starting my own boutique hotel soon. And I'm going to be taking advantage of all this opportunity. So you don't have to be a gringo. You can be a Puerto Rican. I'm so glad you said that. And I, I think between you and, and, and our channel and, and maybe some others, we can start to finally get the word out that most of these great tax incentives are available to everyone. Uh, there's some poorly written parts of Act 60 that really kind of uh, get put to the, to the spotlight where people aren't invited in. And that's a shame. And hopefully that can change. I would love to see the narrative change from let's get rid of it to how could we improve it um, over over a short period of time. But I think it's a start just for us to have this conversation where where you you say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to start my own hotel and I'm going to take advantage of Act 60. You can do Act uh, Act 60 tour, uh, tourism. You can do Act 60 export services. Uh, you're 36 now. So you just missed the young entrepreneurs, uh, which would have which would have been perfect for you as well. If you, if you I didn't know that, that I learned that from your channel, by the way. And then Adon can do that one. And hopefully he will. I mean, you, you do have to decide, do you do, do you go that route or do you do one of these others? Cause some of this stuff you can't stack others, other parts of it you can. Um, but that's a big focus on our channel is to try to just cheerlead Puerto Rico and let people know. Uh, we, you guys we, are doing we, a great job. Entrepreneurship, and what, what you said is you, you, people don't understand how powerful a small entrepreneur is and what that can do to change the lives around them and, and their community, uh, their town, uh, all of it, right? Like it's, it, it's just such a fun thing to watch young people do or anybody really. Uh, so thanks for, for, for bringing that part of it in. What other, what other uh, points do you want to, get across. I mean, you did a magnificent presentation. What else, uh, what else can we tell people about JC, about, about Jet Set? How, how can we bless you? I, I know you're out there and you're, you're, you're blessing us, but how, how can we bless you? Man, I actually think just giving me the opportunity to, uh, you know, interact with your audience, hopefully bring them some value, bring them some nuggets. I think there's a lot there to unpack from what we've talked about today. Uh, the gist of it is, guys, be good to other people. It usually comes back around, you know, tenfold or more. Um, be hospitable with people. We and and then just uh, just kind of go for it. Don't don't you know? Don't get uh, paralysis by analysis type of deal. I wanted to ask you. I think where people could get a lot of value too, because some people are always saying, "Well, Robert, what about you? What actually um, what what actually made you decide?" to do seller financing. I think a lot of people only hear my side of the story, yeah. right? but they never get to hear the seller side of the story. I think they can get some value out of that. Well, I, I, cool. Yeah, I'd be glad to answer that. Um, I have decided going into this kind of crazy economy that we think we're headed into maybe a recession or hyperinflation, and we don't really know where that's going to go. I, I wanted to put myself... Uh, I've always been on the operator side. So when we talked about that a little bit earlier is that I'm a full-on operator. We we buy real estate. That That's sort of our superpower as well. And so we're always on the equity side for the last 25 years. Heading into this, I wanted to get a little bit of stabilization and security. So when you come with an offer for my house that uh, solves some problems for me, I actually switch it. 
from going to where the house cost me about thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars a month to live there and pay power and taxes and all insurance and all of that, I flip it to where now I'm getting about a thirty two hundred dollars a month that goes straight into my bank account if 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 you do what you say and I believe you will. Uh, so it's about a seven seventy five hundred dollars swing for me, um, which is amazing, right? So all of next year, I'm going to walk around with fat pockets, or at least I'm going to think I am. Uh, Although it has been harder to to find somewhere to live, but so that's part of the reason that I did that, and and I would I would add on to that that we've we've made a concerted effort at the end of this year to put ourselves more into this cash flow debt side of the business. So in the last month or so, and including yesterday, I just flipped the hotel with seller financing. Um, in, in about the last thirty days, though, by selling things with seller financing, we've we've brought in. Over $2.2 million of cash. And we've increased our cash flow by about $25,000 a month, heading into this, to this topsy turvy kind of economy that we have, right? So that's why I do it. Like we, we have been extremely blessed to have been in Puerto Rico for five years and, and bought things back then really well. That, have appreciated. We've we've collected cash flow along the way. I'm a big proponent of owning things and having the cash flow, and and so that generated this sort of big amount of appreciation. So we were able to just recently. I, again, it was three three hotel projects that we sold on to the to the next guy, brought in some of our cash, increased our cash flow, and then we did it with the house. and And we've got some other stuff that we're going to sell like that. So I. I am super attracted to what that represents, right? I'm pulling back cash. I'm getting that out. And when I do the deal with you, for instance, that's basically all equity, right? Like, so I'm making an interest rate. Yes, it's only 5% on on $600,000, but that $600,000 didn't exist before you came around. It only existed on paper, right? I I didn't have it in the bank. I, I didn't have it anywhere. It just was kind of, this thing that's out there in the ether that we've got this perceived equity. So now we've started to realize some of this equity. And that's why I think people like me as sellers would, would do that. Also, when I sell something with seller financing, I, I think differently than other people. I'm not trying to squeeze every ounce of dollars out of it or, or interest out of it. I very, very much am interested in your success, right? Like, so I, I want you to be able to be successful. So if I have to take a little bit less in order for that to happen, that, that's that's how my mindset works. I mean, that that's where we came to, okay, we wanted more than 5%, but we're getting 1.1 million, which might be, you know, kind of the top of the range. And so it works for him at 5%. Let's do that. Let's set this guy up for success and let's watch what happens, right? Let's see what happens. So as sad as I am to sell the house, I'm still really excited to see what the hell you're going to do with it, and and be a part of that. So that's you know, really- you, you know, you know what? I'm, uh, this is such a great response to that. It's amazing. But you know what's really, really cool, and I actually never even realized it until recently, is that we always think of the return on investment as a metric that is very like mathematical. We never talk about the return on investment of having a unicorn type of networking property, right? I'm sure that this house has made you more money than like having that house as an example uh, and being able to hold networking events here, there, the amount of money that's produced, you can't calculate that, right? And the relationships and just having yeah. like that environment. So I've noticed that if if you can put yourself in a position at some point to have one or two of those properties, and you can bring invite people in to uh, you know to hang out, interact, etc. The ROI on that is is amazing too. You know, we, we were house hacking that house and didn't even know it. We did a, a short about that a week or two or three ago, where after selling to you, I realized what you're saying. You know, every morning on a Saturday morning, I I would have 15 to 20 people who would come to the house and we would network and we called it the deal makers breakfast. Now we're doing it at your condo, or at least we did last week. And that was awesome. But that is right. What you just said, I had people that brought deals to us where we made hundreds of thousands of dollars because of that house 
we were house hacking that house and using that house to to make ourselves money and we didn't even realize we were doing it at the time right it was just kind of something that organically happened and i hope and i pray that that will continue to happen with that house i know that's with your heart that you want to use the house at least uh for doing that and, and putting on events and stuff so i'm sure that we're going to partner on some stuff back in sure. our house don's house your house my house and we're going to we're going to all do some great stuff with it but yeah that's that's really a fun part of that's awesome. Uh, this real estate game that we that we're all playing. No, man, you know, I, I don't know. I can tell like, when I watch your videos and when we're getting this call, like uh we're I sometimes when I interact with some people, I'm like, man, I'm actually come almost the uh, exact same person, just at a different you yeah. know <laughs> we we think the same way, we understand like our pains, uh, you know, the struggles and, and at the same time. So that's that's what it's all about. It's about like, you know, a lot of people when they're when they are, I was actually apprehensive to partner with people. And what's really cool about uh, this game is like, there's really no limit, right? Like you can only go to zero, but in real estate, you can go to infinity. And if you can find the right people, which exist, it's just a matter of getting in the groups and starting interacting with people uh, and understanding how to, how to uh, offer value to them. Then eventually you just find the right people, you partner, and just life becomes a lot easier and uh, just more fun. So, yeah, we, we, that, I'm gonna give Puerto Rico the credit for the amount of partnering that we do now because before coming to the island, I was more kind of like you said before. I, I did my deals, I stayed in my lane. I, I, I was pretty open. I, I've always been kind of an open book and would tell people what I'm doing and, even how I'm doing it, but I, but I wasn't on YouTube. I wasn't shouting it from the rooftops. I wasn't inviting people to come and uh, get involved with us. And there's problems that come with that. I mean, you, you have to be careful with who you partner with. But I believe that Port, Puerto Rico just has so much talent. And there are so many people there that are actually willing to collaborate and willing to, to do things together, to build things that are great. Uh, it's like nothing I've ever, ever experienced before. And I'm just really grateful. It's Thanksgiving. So this is one of the things that I'm grateful for is to be in this community in Puerto Rico and be in business with guys like you and Adan and, and be able to partner with people that if we hadn't gone to Puerto Rico, we never would have had that experience. If, if you want to, if you were going to say anything to like somebody that's, um, you know, wants to, wants, you know, that wants to get ahead, right. And they're Puerto Rican or maybe they're, they're American, who cares, right. What, what does it take in your mind on on making that switch from like, oh, you know, I'm pissed off because of this and that to like, oh, son, just one switch that you have to do. What would you say that is, you know? Ah, that's an awesome question. I, I've got a short that's going to come out today, so <clears throat> I don't think it's out there yet. But I, I just filmed it today and it was this one thing will change your life. And we're all guilty of the mindset of I can't. And uh, so the short is just basically saying, change that mindset from I can't, I can't whatever it is. I can't afford it. I can't do it. I can't whatever it is. I, I, I don't have the courage, but change the mindset from I can't to how can I, or what would I need to do to be able to do that? If you can do that one thing, and we can all do that one thing, we're not always going to be able to, to do it either. But if you can just start to do that more and more and more the change that this terminology that I can't do something into how could I do something? I promise you that's life changing. I think that that one thing is a great first step. Then there's, there's dozens of other things that they should su subscribe to your channel and mine to learn about mindset and stuff like that. But that's the one thing I'd say today because I, 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 I just, I just did that short. So thanks for asking. I love that. I love that. That's genius, man. Yeah. You know, it's uh it's always good to think about that. So that's awesome, man. Adam, yeah. do you have any questions? Or um, just uh, to add to what Robert was saying, because literally the the day I reached out on Facebook trying to find a, a real estate mentor was was that shift. Like that, all that time up to that point was like. You know, putting myself down, oh, look at all these people. I'll never be able to do that, blah, blah, blah. And one day it's like, all right, either I keep complaining and get nowhere or take the initiative and start somewhere. 
And I put that post out. That's how I came to meet Robert. Now, a year in, we're, we're building this channel. We're building a bunch of other things, too. And what I would say is you just got to you just got to take that first step. Like you said, take that first step. Doesn't matter where you're at. Go for it and and be ready to to learn and accept, you know, everything that comes with it. So and, you, you know, when you say that, the first thing I think about is like, but they're like, but what are people going to think of me if I do? Oh, like, my God. Who cares? <laughs> who cares what they think of it? You know what? If you do really well and you succeed. They'll probably think you're a genius, right? Uh, it's just gonna take a little while, but for the, but when when you get there, they're gonna be like, man, that guy or that girl was like doing a bunch of like things that I didn't understand. But like over time, you get people to look back and say like, wow, man, this is uh, crazy. Yeah, I know that, <laughs> and the hard and and put in the work. You know, don't be scared of that. And and what I say to people is like, what are you gonna think? It's like, don't worry about that because that's. That's why you're there because you're thinking for them. Let them think whatever they want. As long as you know where you're going, you know what you want to do, and you're not hurting anybody, I don't see why. What's the problem? Love it. Love it. That's awesome, man. Oh, yeah. I, 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 love, I love that too, guys. I I, <laughs> I put myself out there, and, and I think overwhelmingly most of the response that we get is positive, and I get Yes, we thank do. you for for putting it out there, Robert. Thank you for giving us that information. I also get a lot of Gringo go home, but I think that it's worth <laughs> it, right? And if and if you're doing something great, you're going to have you can't please everybody. Um, but like yeah. Adon says, know where you want to go and just start taking that step and and change the I can't do something into how could I, and um, it'll change your life. Yeah, I love it. I love it. This is fantastic, guys. I really appreciate you guys uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, share some value, hopefully impact some uh, some lives. So I think to to wrap up this conversation, I I, I would love to invite you, JC, and um, Adon. Let's put on some kind of live event, whether that's live on YouTube or live in that house there that you're in right now in the penthouse, uh, JC, or anywhere on the island of Puerto Rico and, and invite people to come and spend time with us and learn and just uh, will give a ton of value. And I think, uh, I think it would be something that would be great for people to come and, and spend time with us. It would be a lot of fun for us to do. So I hope that we can work towards that goal in mind. Uh, maybe, maybe sometime early next year or, certainly before the end of next year. So let's uh, do it.